Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on setting up Visual Studio for Unity. So in this video we are going to firstly install Visual Studio, then we are going to set up Unity VS which is a Unity package that nicely integrates Visual Studio with Unity allowing us to use a bunch of awesome features uh, which I will talk about in a sec. Then we will install a cool plugin called Stripem uh, which I use all the time. Then we're going to set up my preferred um, Visual Studio settings. And finally, I will show you how to install styles or themes, because let's face it, uh, your color scheme is the most important thing. Uh, that's what kind of makes you look awesome compared to the other programmers just using the default one. Cool. So why would you use Visual Studio? Well. If you're on a Mac, you can't. Uh, Visual Studio is Windows only, so if uh, you're not on a Windows computer, you can just skip this. Um, if you are, however, um, you can pretty much just get used to Visual Studio right now. I mean, it's the most uh, commonly used IDE ever, um, so you will encounter uh, a problem that should be solved with Visual Studio at some point in, in, in your programming career and therefore it's a good program to get used to. Also Visual Studio is much more solid than uh, Mono Develop, at least uh, that's my opinion. I think Mono Develop has uh, way too many bugs way too often and so Visual Studio um, is, is just a, a solid piece of software. Um, also, uh, Visual Studio allows you to insert breakpoints, evaluate variables and expressions, use uh, code uh, wizards kind of to generate uh, code or to browse code. Uh, we can install plugins. It has IntelliSense, which is uh, the um, uh, the code prediction uh, uh, solution that Visual Studio uses, which is actually pretty great. So there are many advantages to using uh, Visual Studio. Awesome. So let's get on with installing a Visual Studio on a Windows computer. So what you want to do here is you want to head on over to visualstudio.com and once you get here you will uh, very quickly notice that there are a bunch of different versions for uh, Visual Studio. It comes uh, with the community version, the express versions, and pro versions, all that kind of stuff. And uh, when you first get here, you might be tempted to just download Visual Studio Community right here. And we are going to be downloading Visual Studio, Studio Community, but we are not going to be using the 2015 editions. Um, those are cu currently in preview, which basically means a uh, public testing phase. Uh, and so if you want to go with the completely solid build, go to free Visual Studio in the top right hand corner and then download Visual Studio Community from here. Great, so once you've downloaded the uh, Visual Studio installer, simply click it and run to open it up. And uh, installing and uninstalling Visual Studio can be extremely slow. And therefore, I've done this beforehand. But you should be able to simply go through an, a fairly uh, simple installation process. And uh, then you should end up with a button that says Launch Visual Studio. And I'm going to do that now. Uh, one thing that you will notice during the installation period is that um, it will ask you which modules you want to install. And there you can basically disable, uh, deselect all of them. Uh, you will only need core Visual Studio components. Um, however, on uh, my system right now, I have installed the uh, C++ uh, module because I do a um, fair bit of C++ coding on this computer. But that's completely up to you. You can also import all of the web stuff or whatever uh, that you, uh, you think you need. Cool. So uh, once you start up Visual Studio, you should be met with a screen that looks somewhat like this. And uh, once you have that open, we can basically just close it again for now. So, and then we can move on to the uh, next step. So I'll just dock this on my secondary monitor here and take a look at what to do next. So now uh, we will integrate Unity VS. So in order to do this, let's open up Unity. I have uh, Unity 4. Point, or, uh, 5.1 installed. It just came out yesterday. Cool. So I've made this uh, kind of test scene to just show you how Unity VS actually works. And uh, you can see here in my assets that I have three folders. I have an editor folder, a script folder, and a standards assets folder. And under the script folder, I have a single script called drag rigid body. 
and that just currently sits on this cube that I've made and it simply allows me when I play to drag around this cube. And uh, yes, this is a script from the standards assets pack. So if that's something you're interested in, you can simply right click and uh, import it. Cool. So uh, in order to implement Unity VS, um, you are going to have to download something because what most people do here is they're going to edit preferences and then external tools and then they simply select uh, Visual Studio.exe, but that's not going to work. Uh, so what we're going to do instead is we'll go to unityvs.com and uh, Unity VS was actually created by a company called Syntax Tree, which is now acquired by Microsoft. So they are now working on it internally, which is pretty cool. But um, the tools are still available at this website. So simply click Visual Studio 2013 or whatever version you happen to be using. Uh, and uh, simply click that and it's going to down download about um, 10 megabytes of an installer here. You can see it's downloading there and I'm just going to cancel that and then instead go into my downloads because I've already downloaded it beforehand. You can see here. Um, and I'm simply going to click that to run. Whoops. Now I started the download again. I want to show that in folder instead, if I can get to it. Here, here we go. So I'm just going to double click that and uh, run it. And I will just close down these tabs again. And then hit next. And uh, you can see again, I've already installed this. Simply run through the installation process. It's very easy and then uh, you should be done. However, it's uh, quite uh, unusual with this installer that basically nothing, nothing happens uh, when uh, it's done. It looks like nothing has changed. That's not entirely correct because if we go to this PC, go to look at disk C, then program files, and this is going to be 32 bits or so times uh, 86. And then we uh, scroll down to where it says Microsoft, you should see Microsoft Visual Studio Tools for Unity. And inside of this, we have the 2013 version. And finally, here we have a .unity package. If you cannot find this on your system, simply search for Visual Studio 2013 Tools. So you would just go uh, like this and it's, it's right there. You can see I already also have um, the 2015 version, um, if I sh uh, happen to, uh, should be happening to, if I happen to need that. So uh, now let's double click this to open it up in Unity. And just like any uh, other um, uh, Unity package, it will just import when you click a button and it should basically be done already. So now we have a folder here called Unity VS and after a second it will load again and say that the uh, system or version specific DLL was created and that's very important that it's created successfully in order uh, for this to work. Uh, also to make sure that everything is set up correctly go to the uh, Visual Studio Tools tab that should appear up here. If not you can refresh it by simply pressing a tab uh, up here and it should refresh the bar and then hit generate project files just to make sure. Cool. Now you can also see under edit preferences, external tools that it says unity vs .open file, and that it has uh, these arguments. Awesome. So what we can do now is we can go to Visual Studio, open in Visual Studio, and it's gonna boot up our project inside of Visual Studio, and we should in a moment be able to see our full Unity hierarchy right here. So you can see that we have the editor stuff, the plugin stuff and uh, the normal stuff, I should say, um, uh, separately, uh, but we can just collapse these two. And under the assets folder, we have scripts and there under we have the drag rigidbody.cs. And uh, we can even see what kinds of uh, fields and methods uh, it's implementing. Uh, all of its members there. So, uh, and once you click on that, you can see that you can browse the code and you should have auto completion enabled also. So if I were to go uh, like transform dot uh, uh, position, you can see that that's working just fine. And it even gives us uh, runtime uh, errors and uh, feedback. So that's super cool. 
Awesome. So that was actually the whole first part of this tutorial uh, was just attaching this editor to Unity. And that's certainly something we've done. You can also see that if I was to close this script here, but keep Visual Studio open, we can go under the cube and simply double click on the script here, and it's going to instantly boot up in Visual Studio. So uh, they are indeed linked. Um, actually really use, utilizing these tools like attaching to Unity up here and uh, error handling and uh, breakpoints and all that, that's for an entirely different video. And uh, they already have a lot of that kind of stuff on the blog and such, so I'm not going to go into it here. Instead, I will show you um, the next uh, point here, which is uh, installing Stripm. So when you are using Visual Studio, uh, and Unity together, you might notice that Visual Studio uh, saves the f uh, files with a different line ending uh, format than uh, the other editors you've been using, or especially if you're using version control, uh, there might be some conflicts. So the solution to this is just using Stripm, which is a plugin that will allow you to specify a certain uh, EOF end of file or EOL end of line uh, format um, for saving files because end of line uh, formats can really matter a lot uh, when using uh, some files in some contexts on some systems. It's a whole separate science but really just install this plugin. So what you want to do is basically just search for uh, Stripm. Um, I will also have all the links in the description and hit download. And uh, then we're going to download the add-in only installer for VS 2013. And we can just uh, click that. And uh, it should uh, put some files. You can see here it says that it's already installed, but it should put some files into uh, the Documents Visual Studio add-ins folder. And uh, you can, of course, check it uh, if they're there. But it just worked for me the first time, and you might need to uh, restart Visual Studio in order for it to appear. Once uh, you've done that, you should be able to go to Tools, Stripm, and then just select Unix LF. Uh, you can also convert files matching a regu regular expressions, a regu regular expression, uh, but I recommend just selecting Unix and uh, get it over with that way. So uh, cool. And uh, next up, on our list, that was a quick one, is uh, my preferred settings. So I uh, have this uh, whole setup with uh, Visual Studio where I like to keep uh, my stuff and uh, kind of how it uh, does code completion and all that. If you would like these settings um, and the style that I'm using, using um, you uh, simply need to go to um, the link in the description. Um, there should be a download link to this brackis.vs or brackisvs.zip file, where if you open this, you will see a brackisvs uh, brackis vs vs settings file, and uh, we can just copy this to the desktop, and you can see it right here. And this contains all the information that Visual Studio needs. Uh, so uh, in order to actually use this, we simply go to Tools, then Import and Export Settings, then Import selected environment settings, go to next. We don't want to save our current settings. Then we want to go in here. We want to hit browse. And you can see here that we have a folder for all of our settings files. So simply copy this path, go into a separate uh, finder window, paste the path. And in here we want to copy our brackies VS settings. Uh, so simply copy those in there. And you can see I already have mine, but I'm just going to replace mine. And uh, now you can simply select it in here, hit open, and uh, then we can hit next. And you can see here we can choose what modules we want to uh, install from this uh, settings file. Uh, so if there's something you want to keep uh, the way it is, you can go through. Um, I recommend just doing all of it. I haven't made any huge changes. Uh, but if you want to use uh, the standard uh, kind of color uh, scheme, simply go under uh, Options, Environment, and then uncheck Fonts and Colors. Cool, so now just hit Finish, and it should reload everything here. The interface and all of the uh, preferences should uh, slowly be added. 
And uh, while it does this, oh, okay, it's actually already done. So you can see here the uh, theme that I'm using. It's um, it's uh, the Monokai th theme, I believe, and uh, I've made a few changes to it. I think it looks pretty nice. Um, and uh, you can see that I like to have the solution uh, explorer and class view over here. It's pretty standard for Visual Studio. Uh, it's only in the Unity version that they've put them over here, but then again, uh, it's it's completely up to you. You can also make the output here just go under the error list. Um, whoops, the, have the error list a bit bigger here. Uh, all of that is up to you. That's just layout. Awesome. So now that that's set up, everything should be working. And the last thing I wanted to show you was if you want your own color scheme, you can go to a website called um, Studio Styles. Dot .es or studiostyle.es um, and uh, that should also be in the description and here they have over 3000 uh, color schemes so you can get exactly the, the one you want and you can of course also very easily customize them uh, if actually just open up Visual Studio here again should be able to see just how easy it is to customize so if we go to uh, tool options then go under environment fonts and colors you should be able to see that everything is very easy to to change in here cool so that was basically it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me know what you would like to see next so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video